So maybe you've heard about this Oral Ozempic that is now making waves in recent headlines. And Oral Ozempic or Oral Semaglutide is nothing new. We currently use it under the brand name called Ribelsis in diabetes management. And I even made a video about a year ago comparing Ozempic to Ribelsis and talking about how it's the least favorite sibling of Ozempic and it's kind of the crappy form of Ozempic. And Boy, did some people get really offended when I said that, and probably will with this video, and I'm not really entirely sure why, but they seem to take personal offense when you say a drug that they're taking is the crappy form of Ozempic. Now, I'm not saying that Ribelsis isn't effective. All I'm saying is that it's not nearly as effective as Ozempic in managing weight and managing blood sugar levels. And that's at least at the current 14 milligram per day dose that we use Ribelsis at. But perhaps at a dose of 50 milligrams per day, we might get a different story. And in fact, the OASIS-1 trial that was just recently published showed that 50 milligrams of oral semaglutide or the oral ozempic is quite effective at managing weight. Now, before we get too far here, let me just clear up some potential confusion that can arise. So semaglutide is the main molecule we're looking at. Semaglutide is found in three different drugs at present, or three different brand names of medications. We have Ribelsis, which is the oral form that's only indicated for diabetes management, up to a dose of 14 milligrams a day. We have Ozempic, which is the subcutaneous injection form that's used once weekly in diabetes management, up to a dose of two milligrams once per week. And then finally, we have Wagovi, which is the obesity version. It's injectable form of it as well. It's a once weekly injection for obesity management up to a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week. These are all exactly the same molecule. Semaglutide is a GLP-1 receptor agonist that ultimately helps us to manage our blood sugars and to manage our appetite and cravings by acting within the brain and decreasing your wanting and drive for food. Basically, the drug company just seems to enjoy making all of our lives that much harder and that much more confusing by coming up with all of these different brand names and such. And so I just wanted to clear the air around that one and making sure that we're all on the same page as to what is semaglutide and which medications it's found in. Now, before I dive into the OASIS-1 trial, what I wanna talk about here is what we know about ribelsis up to a dose of 14 milligrams once per day in diabetes management. Let's quickly talk about the Pioneer trials and the results that they found there. So at 14 milligrams once per day, what we found was that there is about a 1 to 1.4 percent reduction in A1C and about a 0.9 to 2.3 kilogram loss in body weight when we used, again, ribelsis 14 milligrams once per day. And you can see all of that along this little wonderful graph here. This kind of gives a nice breakdown of all the various pioneer trials and the results that they achieved. All right, now what was different in the OASIS-1 trial compared to the pioneer trials is that the OASIS-1 trial was a randomized controlled trial and the dose of ribelsis that they used, or oral ozempic, was 50 milligrams a day. Now let's move on to the OASIS-1 trial. And what the OASIS-1 trial was, was a randomized controlled trial over a period of 68 weeks. They took a group of people that didn't have any diabetes, they were only struggling with obesity, which was defined as a BMI greater than 30 or a BMI greater than 27, plus some obesity-related comorbidity. And what they did with this group of individuals is they split them into two groups. One group got the placebo and one group got titrated up to the 50 milligram tablet of oral ozempic. And so what the titration schedule looked like is they started people on three milligrams once a day for a month, then they went to seven seven milligrams for a month, then to 14 milligrams for a month, and this is the current ribelsis dosage on the market. They then went up to 25 milligrams for a month, and then they finally got them up to that 50 milligram dose. Now again, the titration schedule was slow in order to mitigate any side effects that can arise with these medications. And they also instructed participants in this trial to create a 500 calorie per day deficit and to exercise and increase their activity. Now, what about the results? Well, what you can see here from this little graph is that people that were taking the oral ozempic or the oral semaglutide lost about 15.1% of their weight from baseline or about 15.5 kilos or about 
34 pounds were lost over the period of 68 weeks. So needless to say, that is a pretty impressive weight loss result. And it might even be better than what we found with Wagovi, or at least very, very similar. Because as you can see from this graph right here, Wagovi group lost 14.9% of their weight from baseline. So 14.9% with Wagovi, which is the injectable form of semaglutide that's used for obesity, versus the oral semaglutide or oral ozempic where people were losing upwards of 15.1%. So pretty darn comparable. Now, what about the side effects? Well, side effects were pretty typical for what we see with usual GLP-1 medications, mostly gastrointestinal in nature. So nausea, heartburn, constipation, vomiting, diarrhea, and that sort of thing. On the side of less common side effects, we saw no pancreatitis. There was some gallbladder issues, but again, this isn't really anything new. Anybody who loses a lot of weight or loses weight quickly is at an increased risk of things like gallstones. There was no stomach paralysis or anything like that. The one thing that I do want to highlight here is that there was a slight increase in benign and malignant neoplasms. And for some quick definitions here, a neoplasm is a abnormal growth of tissue. So this is what we usually think of in terms of cancer or extra tissue growth and that sort of thing. When we say benign, what we mean is that it's non-cancerous, so it's not going to spread, it's just hanging out and we've got this growth of tissue. When we say it's malignant, what we mean is that it's cancerous, is that it potentially has the opportunity to spread and cause some other issues and could potentially be life-threatening. I want to show you this table right here which came out of the appendix of this study and it shows kind of a breakdown of what we're looking at when we say that there was a slight increase in benign and malignant neoplasms. And in reality, when we break out all of these various neoplasms, what we see is that there was only one event that occurred in maybe one of the semaglutide groups. There was also one event here and there that occurred in the placebo group. And even then, as you can see, the placebo group also had a couple of incidences of basal cell carcinoma, and there was none with the semaglutide group. And all of the events that were higher were ultimately benign and non-cancerous abnormal tissue growths. So a big question that I'm sure many of you have is, well, should I be worried? And at present, with seeing this increase in benign and malignant neoplasms, I mean, right now, not necessarily. It looks like it's just a signal. We need to monitor it, absolutely. But for right now, there's no mechanism or really rhyme or reason as to why it was occurring. And even if it is or did occur, it was occurring at a very, very low rate with maybe one or two people out of the thousands of people that took the medication in this trial. And further, we haven't seen it with other studies that involve semaglutide and with the other pioneer trials that involve the lower doses of the oral semaglutide. So to be determined, like I said, it's a signal that we need to monitor, but for right now, I'm not worried about it and neither should you be. So overall, I am pretty darn impressed with the results that we saw with this oral semaglutide. It looks like it is safe and the dose of 50 milligrams once per day seems to be at least as effective, if not maybe a smidge more effective than what we see with Wagovi at 2.4 milligrams once per week. And maybe when it comes to market finally, it might not be the least favorite sibling of Ozempic anymore. But the reality is we're probably still quite a ways from it hitting the market. There's still a couple more trials that need to be published as well it needs to go through the usual approval process at the FDA and with Health Canada so we'll maybe be seeing it sometime in 2024 maybe even 2025 that it'll be available and hitting the market in saying all of that of course I am still partial to Ozempic and Wagovi the reason being is there a once weekly injection it's quick it's easy and it's done you don't have to take a tablet once a day. You don't have to worry about taking it on an empty stomach, which for anybody that knows me, if I have to wait 30 to an hour before eating after getting up, people pretty much will die. But it does provide an option for anybody that might have aversions to needles or for whatever other reason they want to use an oral formulation. So that is it and that is all you beautiful people. That is oral ozempic, oral ribelsis, oral semaglutide, whatever you want to call it. It's going to get a different name as it is but the results are pretty darn impressive nonetheless. As always, don't forget to check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan, and check out my website, healthevolve.co, where you can sign up for my newsletter and potentially book yourself in for a consultation with myself. And until next time, you beautiful people, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.